Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tipped. My name is Julian and today's episode is going to be about the NHL schedule and its impact on fantasy. And trust me guys, this is an episode that you're not going to want to miss. This is a very exciting episode for me because I have a very big announcement. I finally made my Patreon live. So for those of you who don't know what Patreon is, it's a membership-based platform where you guys can go on and become a member of Fantasy Tip Nation to help me out a little bit so I can continue to provide the absolute best fantasy hockey content for you guys. If you're interested, guys, the link is in the description, and I have two membership tiers. I have my MVP level, which is $25 a month, and my Fantasy Nation member, which is just $3 Canadian per month. Now, what you're gonna get if you do decide to support me is you're gonna get early access to videos with both of these tiers. That means that before my video officially goes public, you'll be able to view it. So oftentimes what happens, especially in the preseason, is that I make a whole bunch of videos, edit them all, and then I upload them and I schedule them for a whole bunch of days. That way I don't have to record and publish every single day. So you guys will be able to view some videos quite a few days in advance. And in the regular season, I'll oftentimes upload videos during the day, the day before, and then they'll come out the next day in the morning. So you'd be able to view those videos a little bit in advance as well. And you'd be able to get a little bit ahead for your fantasy leagues. Now also through Patreon for both tiers, you have the ability to vote on or to suggest directly to me episodes that you would like to see this pre season. If I like your suggestion, I'll definitely do my best to make that video for you. Now the perk is a 100% response rate to all fancy hockey questions through Patreon. I try to always respond to all my comments on YouTube, but sometimes it's just not feasible for me to get through all of them. Through Patreon though, I guarantee you that I will answer your fancy hockey questions. And then the MVP level, the very big things that you get is a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me every single month, 15 to 20 minutes. You get to ask me all the fancy questions you want. If your lineup you set properly for the next few days, whatever you want to ask me, you can absolutely ask me and I will do my best to help you out. And that is the pretty much the biggest benefit that I'm giving for the MVP level tier. And also if you stick around every three months, you get a beautiful piece of merch. After three months, you get this beautiful blue fantasy tip shirt, very similar to the one that I wore during my videos last year. And then after six months, you get this really clean fantasy tip mug. Pretty nice as well. If you stick around for nine months, you get this beautiful gray fantasy tip shirt. And if you stick around for 12 months, which means you would be sticking around through the off season, I added a little bit of an extra incentive. You get this beautiful fantasy tipped hoodie. If you continue to support me throughout that off season, I definitely appreciate that. And you'll be getting that fantasy tip hoodie. Right now, this is the only way to get fantasy tip merch if you are interested in that. I don't have a merch store just yet. Potentially next year I'll be working on that. But for now, I don't have one. So if you do want the merch, this is the only way to get it for now. So guys, this is finally going live. And if you are interested, you can click on a link in the description in my video if you want to consider joining Fantasy Tips. So jumping into the content now, and the first thing about the schedule that I'm going to talk about is the off days in the NHL. Now, for those of you who don't know what off days is, off days are when there are fewer games on the calendar. In the past, off days have always been on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays because those are the less busy nights in the NHL. This year is no different. 63% of NHL games will be played on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, which is just three out of the seven nights. The remaining 37% will be spread out between Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. This split is really important to keep in mind for fantasy because you don't want to run into a situation where your whole team is always playing on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and you have almost nobody playing on those other nights. That's not ideal for fantasy. You want to spread out your team as much as possible so you never have to bench any of your players, and you're almost always able to play all your players without having to make a choice on who to bench. So why is this important? Well, some NHL teams play on a lot of off days, whereas others really don't. So drafting players from teams that play a lot on off days will definitely help your schedule and definitely help you maximize the amount of games that you can get in for your team for fantasy. As you can see here, guys, the Anaheim Ducks play on 45 off nights. Anaheim's always a team that has the most off nights every single year. They just like to play on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And this year is no different. They have seven more than the next closest team. So if you draft guys like Troy Terry, Mason McTavish, or Trevor Zegras, 
they're going to be able to fit into your lineup a lot more than some other guys. Now, Trevor Zegers is a very good example of this because he's a natural center and you only usually have two center slots. But if you also have Trevor Zegers and he's playing mostly on the off nights, you could probably also have two other centers that are playing on the busy nights and they won't interfere a lot, which is absolutely great. And that's a really good way to get an extra natural center into your lineup. And then the teams that have the next most off nights are Arizona with 38, Winnipeg with 37, Colorado and New York with 36, Minnesota and the Islanders with 34, and then Calgary, Chicago, Edmonton, and Vancouver with 33. Although Edmonton only plays twice the entire year on Sunday, so their off nights are spread along the other nights mostly, which is actually pretty good. And then the teams with the least amount of off day games are Los Angeles, Montreal, and Tampa Bay with only 22. So if you pick a lot of players from these teams, they're not going to be playing a whole lot on the off nights. So if you have a guy like Anze Kopitar and another couple of natural centers that are all playing on busy nights, you're not going to be able to play all three of them if you only have two center slots. So I'd much rather draft a guy like Trevor Zegers, who I'm going to be able to actually slot in on those off nights, than a guy like Anze Kopitar, who I may end up benching on a lot of nights. Other teams with very few off nights are Nashville with 23, Philadelphia with 26, Vegas with 27, and then San Jose and St. Louis with 28. The next thing that we're going to be looking at for the NHL schedule is back-to-back -back games. A team that has a lot of back-to-back -back games is going to be starting their backup goalie a lot just because teams don't tend to start their starting goalie two nights in a row. So let's take a look at who has the least and who has the most back-to-back -back games. The least is Vegas with only seven back-to-back -back games, which would have been really good for a Logan Thompson, but they did just trade for Aiden Hill, so I think he's going to get a good split of the games, even if they're not back-to-backs, but Logan Thompson should still get the majority of the games in Vegas, and I think he's still going to have a good year. And then the Seattle Kraken only have eight back-to-backs as well, which is really good for Philip Grubauer, and not so good for Martin Jones, but Grubauer just gained a little bit of value just because of that schedule. And then Calgary, Dallas, and Edmonton only have 10 back-to-back -back games the whole season, which makes Markstrom, Ottinger, and Jack Campbell gain value as well. Teams with the most back-to-backs are Columbus and the Rangers, which means Merzlikens loses a little bit of value, but Corpus Allo is so bad that they might end up starting Merzlikens on a couple of back-to-backs anyway. And the Rangers, unfortunately, that lowers Shesterkin's value just a little bit because Shesterkin is not going to be starting those back-to-back -back games. They're going to be giving them to Yaroslav Halak in all likelihood. And then the Islanders, the Penguins, and the Philadelphia Flyers also have 15 back-to-back -back games, which is pretty significant, which lowers Sorokin, Jari's, and Hart's value just a little bit. But I'm not too concerned about that. It's not a crazy huge number. So Jari and Sorokin are still going to be pretty valuable goalies in fantasy. And then the next thing, which is related, is on the second half of your back-to-backs, you're tired. Are you playing a rested team? If so, that team has an advantage, and vice versa. If you're a rested team and you're playing a tired team on the second half of the back-to-back, -back, you definitely have an advantage. And as you can see from this chart here, the Anaheim Ducks play 19 games against tired opponents, while tired opponents only play eight games against them, which gives them a pretty serious advantage in terms of potentially winning those games, and they're gonna be facing probably backup goalies as well, which makes guys like John Gibson, guys like Troy Terry, Trevor Zegers, even more valuable this year. Vegas has a pretty nice schedule for that as well, with 11 games against tired teams and only three games where they're tired against a rested team. And as you can see on the other end, the teams with the worst schedule for that are Colorado, Montreal, and Detroit, where they're frequently playing against a rested team and they're tired, which gives them a little bit of a disadvantage. And the last thing I want to talk about is that the average amount of games played every week for most teams is three games. There are some teams that almost never play less than the average amount of games played, which is good because you don't want a team that's constantly playing two game weeks and is screwing you over because, well, they're not getting their games in. Montreal and Pittsburgh are teams that only once in the entire NHL schedule play less than the average amount of games in a week, which is really, really good for your fantasy team. And then the Carolina Hurricanes, the Dallas Stars, the Detroit Red Wings, the Los Angeles Kings, the New Jersey Devils, the New York Islanders, the Ottawa Senators, and the Tampa Bay Lightning only play less than the average amount of games twice in the entire season, which is also really good. And that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this schedule breakdown, and I hope that if you were torn between two players, that this helps you decide, okay, maybe this guy's a little bit better because he is gonna have a little bit better of a schedule for fantasy. I hope it helps you out. Please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tip.